and welcome to episode 533 of Prog Review. And today I'm talking about the songs from the wood by Jethro Tull. The country set, or the 40th anniversary edition, originally released on 11th of February 1977. This is the band's 10th studio album. And again, we have one of these great sets from Chrysalis Records. You've already seen it. If you haven't, go peel back. I did an unboxing, and you can see what lies therein. Um, comes with a 96-page booklet, three CDs, the album, and um, two live CDs, and two DVDs as well. So yeah, get a lot of get a lot of stuff. Get a lot of stuff, don't you? Get a lot of stuff, and. Um, yeah, I mean, as a pack, as a package, it gets five whistlers out of five, right? Because for for not sh- shy of twenty quid, you get the old version again. Every time I'm boring like that, oh, oh it's good if you want to read about it because there's there's lots to read about. You can read about well, how the album came about and there's you know meanings, you know what it all means because it's got a lovely bit of folklore, you know, folklore and the songs in the wood and everything and. Yeah, I mean, again, that part of the package is great. Um, the live concert, again, has been lovingly restored and kind of edited, the footage has been edited back together. And, yeah, it was good fun to watch. I enjoyed watching that, you know. Um, and, yeah, the album. It's just... It's just... You just I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> 1977 and they're doing this kind of medieval folk album all because someone gave them a book on on British folklore um you know meanwhile you know the pistols are doing their thing and you know Britain's <laughs> got blackouts and the three day week and uh and here we have Jethro Tull going hey nonny nonny on us I don't get, I don't, you know, uh, it's just, I, I could have understood it if the album had been released in 1969 or something like that. But to come in 1977, when it did, you just think, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? And the fact that it went to number, I think it went to number eight in the US charts, and I think on number 13 in the UK charts, it's just. That's even more bizarre, isn't it? That that the US should should like this kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's 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 me. I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It's very strange. But you know, the album itself. Um, like I said, I like the, I did like the live stuff. I thought that was very good and very and very worthwhile. While well, I watched, because again, I wasn't that familiar with their live material, live set, if you know what I mean. So. That was nice, only if, you know, from what I've heard from the the other in this series. <clears throat> so yeah, it was good to see that put together. And it's, I mean, it's really well done. It's really that. I mean, that alone is worth the price of admission, just for the two, the, for the the second um, DVD of them playing at Capital Centre Landover in 1977, 21st of November. Worth it for that. Uh, then you get, like I said. We won't talk about the stereo mix because again, the stereo mixes of these things are just done for political reasons. So it doesn't, you know, doesn't compete with um, the album, the like the official version of the album. Um, so we don't ever, we don't really need to talk about that. Uh, but we will talk about the surround sound mix. Again, it's a very sparse, sparse production. It's not, you I mean it's not as layered because it's it's all stripped back. But you get lovely placement of instruments, and you know you get stuff put behind you. Uh, the hit solstice bells, you know, ring out solstice bells. You got a curious um, the shaker bit is kind of at the back. It's a little bit distracting, but it works. It kind of you know gets you into the into the into the thing. I mean, again, the album itself. Well, again, I will talk about the album. Um, it is probably their best record. It's their most, I think, most consistent album, even though it's made up of medieval folk music, and I don't necessarily get it. <clears throat> I think, again, as a concept and a, and, a, and a work, 
it works really well. And again, there, there are tunes on here. There's stuff that you can remember. You know, it's a very it's very poppy. <laughs> That's you know, I mean, you know, uh, Jack in the Green and um, uh, Cup of Wonder, and of course, Ringing Out Solstice Bells, Velvet Green. Um, they're all very, you know, kind of memorable, catchy tunes. And I wouldn't say Jethro Tull are necessarily noted for their, their the stickiness of their songs. You know, they don't necessarily go in and stick. Whereas here, I think this is probably why the record is is so um, held in such high regard, is because the songs are good. You know, they are. You know, they are. I mean, again, it's just weird that they're. I say, hey, nonny, nonny, I'll tell you a song of the wood. You know, it's like, what the fuck, what? <laughs> and you do wonder, you know, you do wonder. I do wonder about Ian Anderson. Like I said, there's a fine line between clever and stupid, and you do wonder he's just such a genius that he thought, you know, no, this will this will work. This is going to catch him. You know, forget those guys over there with safety pins through their nose and green hair. What, what people really want to hear is medieval folk music. That's what they want. Um, so yeah it's fascinating it's a fascinating document in that respect that there is somebody trying to um, create an album out of British folklore that's the concept again it's another concept album the concept is British folklore and it's you know <clears throat> excuse me in some ex- to some extent bands like Fairport Convention you know touched on it but you know you know, Anderson goes in a bit deeper with this. I mean, the whole thing is, is you know, based on on the book he was given. Um, so yeah, it was really curious to hear it. And again, I I enjoyed it. I didn't. It wasn't unpleasant. It wasn't unpleasant listen. Um, <clears throat> again, it helps that it's only forty one minutes twenty two seconds long. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, the album's it's all right. You know, it's all right. But it's a miles away from. The other stuff they've done. This is the this is the witness. This is why I've got a kind of grudging respect for for Anson and the band is because like what they do is unique. They do some unique stuff there, and and it was kind of always there was there was kind of always hinting towards this, like this was going to be the not the culmination, but there was always kind of heading towards this because even right from the early stuff like the Witch's Promise and Living in the Past, you know, you got that kind of folky filter stuff. And then they go, you know, via the, the prog rock jazz and, you know, it's like, yeah, it just, it just seems like this is out of, out of place. It should have been earlier, you know, back at the beginning of the, <clears throat> of the, of the career, as it were, rather than coming towards this awkward middle section, I think you'd call it, midsection, yeah, maybe. Uh, there may be some that, that disagree with that, but... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I am aware of the album. I mean, I've listened to it before, and you know, I've always thought it was very just a strange record. Again, when you listen to it in context, if you think of the context that when it was recorded and when it was you know released, it just really, really strange decision, uh, you know, to come out with. But you know, somebody liked it because again, it's one of the it's, fan, it's a fan favorite, and it did relatively well in the chart. Um, so yeah, that was a that was a thing, and of course you get a load of extra stuff on here, as well. Alternate version of Solstice Bells. Um, again, the the hardcore fans probably know this stuff better than I do, but again, it was interesting listening, you know, to to, to these things, and uh, you know, and again, it was a it wasn't an uh, it wasn't an unpleasant experience. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and I really liked the the live gig. I thought that was good fun as well. I thought, again, it's like part Monty Python, part folk gig. You know, very. Str- I mean, very strange. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get the humour, but you know, you just think, you know, how did Americans get this? How do they like it? I just that's what I find the enigma. That's what I always find really interesting about them as a band. But you know. They must have been doing something right, you know, for him to 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 have this out. So yeah, I mean, if you love this album, you are going to love this. I mean, God, don't don't hesitate. There is a link in the description, so I can have the micro payments from Amazon for all the, every copy sold. You have got to get with this. This is good stuff. This is good fun. Again, the booklet. It can even if you know, even if you go, oh, well, I've already got the album or or whatnot. I'm not into the surround sound. Just to read up 
on the history of the album and where it came from and you know you know it's just fascinating stuff to read I really enjoy reading these and um, again you know I mean every I mean they put other bands to shame when they do reissues the level of detail put into it forget the music just the interviews alone they could bloody compile them into a giant book they probably will do now I've now suggested it but I just love the the, the, the detail and, and the love. There's a lot of love that's gone into this. And to do it and give it you know, give it away for twenty quid, you know it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. So there you go. Oh and the album itself. Um I'd give it a I'd give it a yeah, I'm gonna give it a four Jack in the Greens out of five actually, because I enjoyed it. Bloody bizarre. Bloody strange. <laughs> no, it, it came in nineteen seventy. Ignored seventy seven, Darren. Ignore punk. Ignore Britain at that time. Just imagine it came from a timeless place, somewhere timeless. You know that that works. But yeah, do I recommend it? Do pick it up if you. And you know, my edu- education at Jethro Tull continues. Am I a fan? No, but I I give them grud- grudging respect. There you go. How's that? Is that a good compromise? But I do love these reissues purely for the... I mean, I like reading about... I like reading about biographies, the rock biographies and the making of the albums. I like that classic album series. So this, these reissues fit nicely into that. Even if I don't necessarily like the album, I'll get something out of the out of the words. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I look forward to them when they come out. I actually look forward... I do actually look forward to them. Uh, <laughs> You're a Jeff Rattle fan. You just won't admit it. No, never. I'm never admitting it. So there you go. Um, if you haven't got it, do get it. My name's Darren. Look, I've been talking about Jethro Tull, the country set, the 40th anniversary edition. Another great, another great um, addition to the to the collection. Um, and there's a link in the, in the in the doodad below for you to go to Amazon. Um, thank you for watching. There's social media. You can sit on my Facebook and tickle me Twitter and do what you want with Google Plus. I still don't know what that means. Got a tumbler now. You fall over me tumbler. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, don't forget, there's the Patreon, patreon.com slash lock. You can even listen to my awful music at music.darrenlock.com. You might even like it. You might even want to buy it. It's on iTunes, bit.ly slash lock iTunes. You can go there, buy, buy albums. It's true. It's true. If you think I'm a freeloader, you can buy some of the stuff I've created for all you people who think I'm a freeloader. Freddy Freeloader. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But anyway, <laughs> I've been to it. Songs from the Word. And uh, yeah, it's been good fun. I suppose, was it Heavy Horses is next? We've got to wait for that. Are they doing that? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows if Stephen Wilson's busy? He's got a new album coming out. So who knows? Uh, but thanks for watching. Don't forget to. And we'll do this all again soon. There's only one more thing to say, and that is Progon.